Welcome back to Hills and Hollers. This episode is all about white-tailed deer. We're getting ready for the season opener here in Kentucky. It's archery season. September 1st is yep. coming quick. Yeah, but it all starts back in June. That's when the real season starts. We got food plots, we got mineral sites, trail cameras, tree stands. It all starts there. There's a lot of homework you got to put in, a lot of work you got to put in before you can even climb up in that tree. It's a lot of work. But what's nice about it, when you do that homework, come 1st of September, they're nice, they're easy to pattern sometimes. If we can get in there, know what they're doing day to day, and have a really good chance at a great buck. So stick with us, folks. This is going to be an awesome show all about whitetail right here in Kentucky. It's going to be good. Stick around. Season's come to a close. Well, it's time to get ready for next hunting season. The management of our turkey and deer goes well past the hunting season. We're improving our land. And I'm going out right now to the H, &H properties here in Kentucky to check out the progress we got going on. A little project where we're clearing out some woods, make a little money off that to pay for a little habitat improvement. We're doing bedding areas, we're doing food plots, and we're doing water sources. Just everything that a deer and a turkey could need, we're trying to make happen on our place. And that's what we do in our off season. So the season never really ends. We're always scouting, we're always trying to improve the habitat and improve the herd. Whether that be through hunting or through land management. So, let's get out there and see what's going on. We've only got three or four acres in food plots. We want to get more like 10 to 20 acres in food plots. So we cut this plateau, this finger coming down, and it's going to be a good four or five acres. We'll plant clover all across this. It'll be a big field of clover, big open area. And as far as you can see, we're going to put on both sides of this field bedding areas on the other side of creeks. And then we'll also create a new lake closer to the top. So you'll have bedding area, food plot, lake, bedding area, and uh, plenty of room for the deer to move on. This will really be good. So with this addition, we'll have 10 to 15 acres of food plot. And then our neighbors have done the same things. We're all we're all trying to build quality fields here for the deer, so all told there's probably 500 to 1,000 acres all around us that should be real good habitat. The wood is not going to go to waste. Now that we're taking a lot of these oak, white oak out, uh, poplar, hickory, we're working with a, a logger that uh, operates about five, six miles from here. And the dozer operator, former logger, is a friend of ours, he's helped us. Uh, clear other food plots. So we're going to take as many of these mature trees out of here to the lumber yard as we can and we're going to sell them on the market and that should cover our costs of doing all this and, and then some. So we're not going to waste anything. There goes the brown gold. Three white oak trees headed toward the marketplace. That should help offset some of the cost of doing all this. Better than letting them get old and just rot here in the woods. We're going to take as much action as we can to make sure that we get the good ones to market. And we're going to use the others for firewood and other purposes. That's, we'll be using our noggin on this whole operation. So it's early summer. We've got some of the food plots done. We've got mineral sites. As we said, we've got trail cameras, tree stands, and so forth. As it started to go on, Chris started pulling trail camera pictures, started emailing them to me. Noticed several bucks started working the yeah. property. Now keep in mind, the property is how many acres? Well, the whole property is about 180 acres, but 
there's a patch of woods that we hunt that's only about 40 acres big. And on one side, it's got about 1,200 acres of corn. And on the other side this year, it had 400 acres of soybeans. So there's lots of attractants out there and one little patch of woods that kind of sits right in the middle of it. Just happens to be pretty thick, nice bedding areas throughout. And we've got trail cameras all in there. Trying to get a good sense of what a herd is. You know, you want to get, get them to walk in front of that camera so you can see what's out there. Start to narrow it down a little bit. Say, hey, I like him, I like him. Put your list together. And then start really honing in on them. You know, in, in that early part of the season, we said before, it's a little bit easier to pattern. They're not in the corn, eating the corn is their main staple at that time of the year. They're gonna eat the beans and so forth, but what's nice is we can pattern them there and take that opportunity to have a chance at one of these good bucks that we find out later or grow like crazy. That's right. So about mid-August, there was two deer that really stood out to us. It was a mainframe 10 point, mainframe eight point. Those are two at the really the top of the list for us. Yeah, and I'm not really creative with names. <laughs> so I called the great big 10 point, typical 10 because he was a typical 10. We shortened it to tip 10, just to make it easier to say. Don't let him lie to you, he spent hours coming up with that, God. days. And then we have the big eight point, <laughs> and I just called him grade eight. Hold it, that's phenomenal. Oh, wow. That's good stuff. Yeah, he's the grade eight. They're good deer and right. they're right up there on our list. Either one of them, first to come in, just gonna try to take a ride home with us. 10 after five, we were hoping to be on the road by 4.45, so we're about on schedule. It's opening morning, archery season here in Kentucky, September 1st. Full moon, about as full as it could get. And to top it off, we have Hurricane Isaac about to smack us in the face. So, I think it's gonna be a good morning. I think the deer are gonna be moving. I think they're gonna to wanna to get up off their feet right before this storm hits. And we are going to smoke either the grade eight or the tip 10, or both. And then we're gonna head back to the cabin, kick up our feet and watch some college football. It's gonna be a good day. Good morning, and welcome to opening day of archery season here in Kentucky. It's, it's a bit muggy, it's warm, I'm sweating a little bit. We've put in a valiant effort the first morning, but it's starting to get pretty hot. So I think we're gonna head on back to the cabin, refuel, recharge, time to go eat. Copy that. Let's get back out in the woods. Yeah, in okay. the shade at least. Let's oh yeah, the in breeze. the shade. There is a nice breeze, and this morning when we got here, it was dead calm, but now we got a pretty good consistent, I'd say what, five mile an hour breeze? Yeah. Coming out of the south with a, just a hint of southwest to it, so it's perfect. It's blowing away from the bedding area we're hunting, blowing away from the mineral site that we're sitting over. I don't know, it's, it's just gonna work. Let's just, let's just go. All right. 
Go. Waiting on you, man. Always waiting on you. It's always the cameraman's fault. That was grade eight. That was grade eight. You see the blood spill out of it. That was that. The broad did. That was Armor Edge right there. Just got him in the mail yesterday. <laughs> the sucker's on the ground here. Man. Dude, he's already down. Did you hear him crash? Somebody throw VW at the back of the pole. Oh my goodness. Dude, that was grade eight. We have been watching him for months. And I thought, you know, we had trail camera pictures of him this morning when we walked in. And I think we bumped him, but he came right back in. He was here at 642 this morning. He was here like 20 minutes before we walked in. 542, something like that. And I just, I think I smoked him. I think he's down. That Luminoc, man, it was purdy. We did it, man. 
I know I was looking at those little eights. I was like, they're cute, but <laughs> I know there's bigger here. He shed his velvet, man. He did. He took his velvet off. That's weird. First of September, and he's already lost his velvet, but I don't even care, man. He is a good eight point any day of the week. Thank you. Yeah. That sucker hit the dirt down in that. He hole. did. Thank you for running Thank camera, you. man. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Good day, man. Some first day getting it done. Well, do I look wet? Your eyes are glowing. Yes, you look moist. Huh. It's a moist kind of night. It hadn't even rained yet. It rained a little bit. About three drops. You know what? There's a little puddle in the back here. It rained. Okay. There's a, a puddle. There's a puddle there's in a the puddle bed. In your shirt. Oh, okay. Yeah, there is. Ah. <laughs> uh, we came back to get the electric vehicle because we're going to need it. So let's head on back up to the kill site. That new trophy taker, Almer Edge. I mean, look at that. Can you see that? Look at that, it's got bubbles all over it. It's good lung blood. Bright. bright red. And we heard him crash. We cannot be too much further. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. It's clear up here. Look at that. I hate to say this, this might be an insensitive thing to say, but this is not a blood trail. This is a murder scene. This Almer Edge that I just got in the mail yesterday. Jared Lyle said, you gotta try these. We've been working with Shuttle Tees from Trophy Taker for years and years. And uh, Jared said, try the Almer Edge. And I'm hooked. Look at this. Oh man. It's covered. It is September 1st, opening day of archery for Whitetail here in Kentucky. And we did our homework this summer watching this guy, and it paid off. Yesterday, Friday, we received the new Almer Edge broadheads in the mail. And I tell you what, we've been shooting the shuttle tees for years and years, but down here, oh man, look at that. The entrance hole, this is the entrance hole for your new broadhead. This is wicked. And actually, we did not have an exit wound because I hit the opposite shoulder when I shot, but I am sold on your new broadhead, and I will definitely be using it on my bow from here on out, but on my ridge, baby. Definitely did the deed here, opening day of archery in Kentucky. So in all the excitement of the deer coming in, I could tell it was a shooter before he got close, so I just took my eyes off of the rack and just focused on making the shot and getting drawn without getting busted and connecting right where I needed to. So for some reason I had it just locked in my mind without even having looked that this was the grade eight that I had just shot. And as we go to recover him, we had a pleasant surprise. He ended up being the tip 10. Tip a couple 10. more points there we didn't count on. That's winning. right, very nice surprise. It was a good surprise. It was a very successful hunt. We always had the name of tip 10. Later on that night, we're in the house, taking it easy after we get everything cleaned up. Look online, mm -hmm. we realized that the day before, August 31st, was the second full moon of the month of August 2012. Second full moon. Makes it the blue moon buck. He's the blue moon buck. That's how he carries the name today. Finally got it done on opening day. I've been trying for years and it came together this time. And I gotta thank you for running camera for me because it always helps when you're not out there trying to do it all on your own. I'd do it for you any day. Thank it paid you. off big this year. It did. We put in our time, we were there hard on the first day and we got it done before that big storm rolled in.
Season's not done yet. That's just the beginning of our whitetails for this year. We had a big year for whitetails. So it's all coming up right yep. here on Hills and Hollers. Don't go anywhere because it's going to be good. We'll see you next time on Hills and Hollers.